What I'm going to do in this video is tell you all about DirectX, why it's important, why it matters, why you should care about it. And the first thing I want to do is point out that the original Xbox was based on DirectX technology, and that's where the name comes from. It's actually the Direct Xbox, which I find interesting. But without further ado, let's get into how DirectX is DirectX. I don't know where I was going with that, but um, it's a graphics API. All right, it's not the only one. There's other ones like OpenGL. The thing about DirectX is it can do more than OpenGL. The trade-off is that it is Windows exclusive, whereas OpenGL is cross-platform. But I'm already getting ahead of myself because I haven't even explained what DirectX is. And I'm going to do that right now. First off, with an analogy for making a video game with making a house. Building a house is not an easy thing to do. There's a lot to it. To properly make a house and to focus on the house itself, it would be a lot easier if a lot of things were taken care of, such as the septic system, the telephone poles outside running wiring to the house, uh, the pipes under the road running pipes to the house with water so you could, you know, have a toilet. Um, all of these things make it a lot easier to build a house. And that's essentially what DirectX is in this analogy. DirectX is those core parts of the house that the house developer, instead of worrying about the telephone lines outside, they can just worry about the electrical wiring inside and, and where they want to put their outlets and the, the plumbing, just getting the, the pipes to their bathroom so they can have um, a sink where they want. And... Um, they know that it's going to go out to a nice septic system. You know, when you turn the sink on, you know that water is going to come out of the sink because you have a water main. DirectX is the water main. All right. So how it works is you have your game that talks to the graphics API, which then talks to the operating system slash graphics driver, and then onto the actual physical graphics hardware. Before DirectX, programmers had to develop their own way of reading each particular computer they were working on. So they'd have to figure out how to read a particular keyboard, how to detect a joystick, how to spit sound out of the speaker on each machine they were working with. So you can imagine how complicated that must have been. So DirectX makes it a lot easier. It's a collection of APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interface. And there's all kinds of different APIs within DirectX that have Direct in the name. So there's Direct 3D, Direct Draw, Direct Sound, and it all makes it easier for the developer to communicate with the particular machine. Um, with Direct Sound, the developer doesn't need to know what sound hardware the end user has. DirectX takes care of that communication. Before this, it, it was a nightmare. And it's, it's the reason why DirectX was, was created in the first place. Developers back in the day had to figure out their own way of talking directly to the hardware. And that was a problem for Microsoft. They realized that they had to come up with a common way for developers to make games on the Windows platform. And that was because in 1994, a bunch of games came out. Jazz Jackrabbit, Doom 2, System Shock. None of them were developed for Windows, but instead were developed for MS-DOS, which was Windows' predecessor. That was because it was a lot easier to develop for MS-DOS at the time. So they put their heads together and tried to come up with a way to get game developers to start developing for Windows. And you know who worked on the project? None other than future Valve co-founder Gabe Newell. And once DirectX was ready, they figured a good game to start with using DirectX would be Doom. So they reached out to John Carmack, he agreed, and Doom 95 was the result. It was actually an improvement to Doom in a number of ways. So DirectX had a great start, and although it didn't launch with Windows 95, it has been included with every Windows version since. But there's many different versions of DirectX. For example, the original Xbox used a heavily modified version of Windows 2000 and DirectX 8.1. Um, but most 
versions of DirectX are backwards compatible. So if you have a game that requires DirectX 6 and you have DirectX 7, the game will work just fine. And the way you get DirectX is usually it comes with the game that you're installing, um, but you can otherwise get it right from the Microsoft website itself. Um, but anyway, I, I hope that this video helped you understand what DirectX is all about. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.